Julian Aume is the name. Please, permit me to start with a question. Does it bother you that a woman in labor will be suddenly asked to prepare for a cesarean section? My wish is that at the end of this particular health talk, we will have a better understanding and be well informed on what the condition likely is. Now, when a woman in labor is asked to prepare for an emergency cesarean section, there are two possible cases. It is either she has an abnormal or prolonged labor, or she has an obstructed labor. I will explain them shortly. Just stay with me. By way of introduction, labor is a painful contraction of a woman's womb that helps to bring out the baby and the placenta at the time of delivery. Labor can be separated into different stages, but it is a continuous process. First stage is from the beginning of the contraction of the woman's womb to when the service is fully opened. The service is like the mouth of the womb. Second stage is from when the service is fully opened to the delivery of the baby. Third stage is from delivery of the baby to the delivery of the placenta. And fourth stage is period of one hour after the placenta has been delivered. Now, to understand the process of labor, there are three things involved in a woman in labor. We know them as the three Ps. The first P stands for power. The second P stands for passages. The third P stands for passenger. Now, powers refer to the, the painful contraction of the woman's womb that helps to push out the baby through the birth canal and also the strength of the mother to push out the baby. We we'll call them powers. The passages refer to the birth canal. That is the place the baby will pass through to come out at delivery. This includes the hip bone, the muscles around the hip bone, and the soft tissues of the perineum. Then the passenger is actually the baby, because it's the baby that will pass. So the baby is the passenger. And we are concerned about the size, the position, and the part of the baby that comes out first. That's the presentation. So when these three Ps are favorable, that is, with good contractions of the womb, when the mother has enough strength, the hip bone is adequate, the size is good, and then a baby is normal size and positioned well, coming with the head, then normal labor is likely to occur. And when these three Ps are unfavorable, labor is likely to be abnormal, resulting in the need for an intervention during childbirth. Now, the series of changes made by the baby, because the baby is coming out, baby will be taking positions that will be comfortable. These changes, we refer to them as the mechanism of labor. With this picture we have painted, I want you to know that there is an estimated duration of hours for all the stages of labor to occur. And when the time is exceeded, you can say the labor is prolonged or abnormal because the expected progresses are not made by the baby. And the midwife or the doctor attending to the woman swings into action to help achieve a safe outcome. That being said, the causes of abnormal labor will basically be related to these three Ps we have mentioned. So factors related to the powers. Whatever causes the womb not to contract as expected, things like over-distension of the woman's womb, when a woman has too much water inside her womb, or she has two or more babies, multiple pregnancy. When a woman is coming for the first time, that's her first time in labor, because her womb has not gone through this process before, so she might be slower than others. Then, of course, when a woman has used some medications or substances that can make her drowsy or that will make her uterus to relax or make her sleepy, these things will make her not contract properly. Then problems relating to the passenger, and the passenger is the baby, right? Good. Now, um, cephalopelvic disproportion, when the baby's head is too big to pass through the mother's hip bone, there's a disproportion, or the hip bone is too small for the mama baby to pass through. Then, if a baby is not positioned well, for example, a baby is coming with a buttocks or something, abnormal eye presentation. Then, of course, problems with the baby. For example, a baby is born with too much water inside the head, hydrocephaly. Or the baby has a tumor, like abdominal tumor, inside the womb. Baby cannot come out through the vagina. Or when the baby, when there are two babies that are joined together, co-joined twins, that's a problem. And then when this, uh, when this happens, especially when a woman goes to a TBA home or a local delivery home, which of course does not have a professional midwife or a doctor, then that mother stands a chance of either losing her life or that of her baby. 
And at the beginning of this health talk, remember we identified two possible reasons why a woman in labor might be asked to prepare for a cesarean section. Now we've looked at the abnormal or the prolonged labor and why it happens. So now I want us to look at the next one, and that is obstructed labor. Labor is said to be obstructed when the part of the baby coming first, that is the presentation of, present, presenting part of the fetus, cannot progress into the birth canal despite good contraction of the womb. When this happens, it means that there's an arrest in the process of labor despite good uterine contraction. And it is impossible for that woman to deliver without assistance. The most frequent cause of obstructed labor is a mismatch between the fetal head and the mother's pelvis. When the baby's head is too big to pass, or the hip bone is too small for the baby to pass through, even if the baby has a normal size. And it is more common where malnutrition is prevalent. Once a diagnosis of obstructed labor is made, delay is dangerous. That baby ought to be taken out as soon as possible and the mother allowed to rest. Remember, this is an arrest. That means there's no going further. So emergency session is what we need to, be, uh, need to do immediately. Now, when CBAs encounter such a case, traditional better attendants, they do not have the expertise to help such a mother. And they, some of them give this woman, these women for days before they give a go ahead for them to go to the hospital. And sometimes mothers come to the hospital already exhausted, dehydrated, and in a tired state. Sometimes they come in with fresh still breath. A baby that died from not too long from when they came in. And worst of all, some mothers end their life's journeys in this process. What ought to have brought joy to them and their families ends in sorrow. This is gruesome and it should not happen to anyone. The pain of labor is already too much, let alone leaving a woman in the pangs of childbirth for days. Have you heard of the saying that the sun should not set twice on a woman in labor? Yeah. Mothers. You have the right to life while giving life to another. Go to the hospital when you are in labor. It is your right and nothing short of it, please. Please let nothing stop you from going to the hospital during labor. Remember, pregnancy in itself is not an emergency. It gives us a long time, a long notice, a nine months notice. So please start early, plan for your delivery. Save a little token every week or every month, depending on the frequency of your household's income. Fathers, husbands, start early. Don't wait for labor to start before you run around for help or financial assistance. Go early, talk to a friend or the organization you belong, or your social group or business associates. Get bulk money, keep it in reach long before your wife's delivery date is due. Leave nothing to chance. I repeat, leave nothing to chance. No mother comes back to life after dying. If she's gone, she's gone. So please let the lack of money or anything at all not be a reason for a woman to be allowed to die in childbirth. So how can we prevent this from happening? Please stay with me. Let us know the roles you and I have to play to help prevent this from happening. Because everybody in the society has a role to play. Are you surprised? Well, in the continuation of this video, we shall see what you and I, a, a man, woman, a youth, everyone out there can do to help save our mothers from dying as a result of a prolonged obstructed labor. Do well to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell, the notification bell, so that once new videos are uploaded, you're notified immediately. And see you now. Thank you.